Hi guys, I'm back. I'm going to get into that in another video of why I haven't been around for a while, but in the meantime, I want to talk a little bit more clarification on the cautery when you're using it and adding one other little tip that I didn't include on the other one that I had made. So on the left hand side here, we see the cut. When the cut is on, it's going to be on 100% of the time, and that's why you see those spikes. The voltage is going to be 1300 to 2300 volts. And because it's constant and that heat's constantly being applied, it's going to vaporize the cell and the heat is going to be dissipated in the vaporization of the cell. Now you have the coagulation. And the coagulation is about three times what the cut is. Of course, depending on what settings a surgeon has it set to, but the coagulation is going to go from 3,500 to 9,000 volts. And it's going to be on only about 6% of the time, 94% of the time it's going to be off. And so as it cools, that heat, instead of being vaporized by the cell, is going to be transmitted to the adjacent tissues. So you get more collateral damage with coagulation when you use that. Now on the right hand side, you have the cut blend setting. The, the bovies that I see right now that we use only have one option of, of a blend. Uh, they have the pure cut, which is just cut like you see on the left. It would not do anything to cauterize a vessel and stop it bleeding. It would just cut through the tissue. You can put blend and add that to it. And what you're doing is you're adding some coag to it. And we used to have ones that had blend one, two, and three on it. So depending on which setting, one would have the least amount of coag added to the cut and the three would have the most. Uh, the ones we use right now just have either the pure cut or the blend, so I'm not sure whether they really took it off the market or whether there are still some bogies that have that. So on this particular one, with just the regular cut and a blend, it is on about 50% of the time and off about 50% of the time. The volt is somewhere, voltage is somewhere in between the cut and the coagulation at a peak voltage of 3,000. And so, as you can see, that's going to do a little more adjacent burning, but it's also going to stop the bleeding. So that if the surgeon's using cut, he's probably going to want you to use a blend. Now, this being said, if you understand this concept, this is why the company recommends that if you are using cautery on a laparoscopic instrument and you're... Um, touching it with coag or cut and you have that choice, they say that you should use the cut because it's a lower voltage, so it's less damage to adjacent tissue. So if you're using that on a laparoscopic instrument, there will be less chance of transmitting it to, uh, or arcing it to um, any adjacent tissue. So they recommend if you're going to be stick bovine cauterizing, even on, if you're doing it on a hemostat, that you should be using the cut instead of the coag. And I know most of us tend to use the coag the other thing that's just a, usually a minor thing because it doesn't usually make a difference, the only time it would make a difference is if the surgeon had a hole in his glove, but if he's holding a hemostat and wants you to cauterize it, what you should probably do is cauterize by holding it on the hemostat below the hand of the surgeon. That way the, the current will not be transmitted past his hand. It doesn't make a difference if he doesn't have a hole, but if he had a hole, he would also get uh, cauterized or electrocuted. and get a shock from it. So you want to avoid that. Now the one other thing that I didn't mention on the other one um, is that sometimes when you're doing a laparoscopic case and say the there was a little nick in the liver that was bleeding and the surgeon wanted to use the endoshears or some sort of one of the laparoscopic instruments to cauterize the liver but he didn't want you to open up the bovi cord that goes onto the prong. So uh, you got to do what you got to do. The, I'm going to have to make do with showing you what I have. So you know how they have, and this of course would only be one, they have the prong um, that goes onto the handle that you would attach the bovi cord to. The surgeon may just want you to do the, the touch cautery by using that. So what I have found is these prongs have a slit down the middle of it. Now if he's burning something inside the abdomen, or inside laparoscopically anywhere, and I'm controlling the bovi, then I want to be sure that I'm watching the monitor when I am pushing the bovi or um, when I'm activating it so that I can see 
and make sure that I'm turning it on at the appropriate time and turning it off when it needs to be off. And what I have found is when I try to touch it like this and he moves, it can come off in the in the process because I'm looking up at the monitor. And yet I don't want to look down at this as he's doing it because I want to be sure that my timing is correct. So let's pretend that this one has a slit in it that goes all the way down like the prong that you have on the laparoscopic instruments. What I find is helpful is I actually put my bovie down through the slit in here and then I can look at the monitor and when the surgeon moves, if he's moving that instrument to get different spots, it will automatically move. My bovie will move with it and I can keep my eyes on the monitor and know when the appropriate time to bovie to activate and turn it off is. And I have found that very helpful.